Having this true curiosity on the Ranveer Show. I've read so many spiritual books over the last nine years in order to fuel the content for the show. And I know that there is some spiritual significance of both the sun and the moon. And from a larger context, space in general, there's something up there that is supposed to teach us something about our reality. Uh, I don't know what Tantra says specifically about the moon, but is that a subject you've explored? No, not uh, specifically, not just Tantra. So moon and uh, sun have their own significance when you look at it from the Jyotish point of view, which is allied to Tantra and uh, not just Tantra in the normal, uh, the Vedic and the Puranic uh, Upasana Paddhatis also. Because Jyotish is finally the eye that gives you an insight, which is uh, remarkable in my opinion. Um, so the moon is uh, the representative of all emotions. Moon is representative of the mind. Moon is representative of the mother. Okay. So these things are important. Moon is the representative of Devi. So this, because the moon has its own phases from the Pratipada to the Amavasya and then um, Purnima, etc. All the phases that it goes through. Accordingly, there are Nitya Devis. There are accompanying goddesses of the main deities depending on the phases of the moon like that uh, moon is extremely crucial because your mind is extremely crucial if your mind is your friend then you can do a lot of things if your mind is uh, uh, does not is not agreeing with what you're trying to do what lifestyle you're leading or what work you're doing etc then it is obviously going to hamper your spiritual practice and hamper everything you're saying this all from a jyotish perspective but this is important even in the sadhana perspective as in as in, so when I, uh, suppose I'm guiding somebody into some spiritual practice, uh, it not only is important to tell them that what to do, but sometimes there will be blockages, karmic blockages in the uh, chart of the individual, which we can find out from looking at the imprint uh, at the moment of birth, the horoscope if it is looked at. And those need to be cleared in order for the individual to progress smoothly. That is important. So there... Uh, the moon plays a vital role. What kind of the mind? In fact, there are certain combinations. I won't mention them, but there are certain combinations of the moon, uh, certain placements of certain grahas connected to the moon, which I have seen help people uh, to do Bhairav Upasana very fast. So I can I have a general idea can come in uh, that, you know, uh, whether this particular deity will gel with an individual or not. So all grahas play a role. Moon plays a very vital role. That's what calming effect of the moon calms your mind. You feel more relaxed. You feel more happy. You feel more uh, energized. Okay. That's extremely important. And the sun is also important in terms of one to is obviously the sun is important in terms of a source of light. And also as a primary orientation of the Vedic religion is with respect to the sun. Somehow or the other. Okay. The, the solar, uh, uh, the solar power and the solar light. And the uh, energies connected to that are very crucial in some senses for development of an individual in the Vedic path. Sun also represents at some level the Atma of an individual, at a very deep level. So the Atma is all pervading. It is everywhere and all times it's working. But till the time you are not aware of it, it's as good as not there working for you. So it's very important to know, understand this. So this differentiates between what is the theoretical perspective and the practical reality of the universe. In theory, for example, there are many people who may believe that I am the Atma. They will tell also. Um, there's a very <coughs> the pop popular Upanishadic sayings and all that. But the point is, if you have not experienced the Atma, if you're not living in the Atma, these are all statements that have no meaning. Okay. So you start being truthful to the reality that you are in, not to an imagined reality that you are not in. Sun is either your Atma or your ego. Hmm. Fair. Um, we speak a lot about Shani Dev. Yes. And that is a segment I wish to break down with you in this episode itself. Okay. But before that, I'm going to ask you about the other cosmic deities, for lack mm -hmm. of a better word. Okay. Surya Dev, for example. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I would argue is a deity that is quieter now than it was in the past in Sanatan Dharma. 
Yeah, so <coughs> multiple factors come into play. Uh, not only the will of the deity, but there is also a, uh, uh, the karma of the people. Just like an individual has a karmic imprint, a nation, a race of people may have a karmic imprint. So at one point we had the Surya, the sampradayas which were solar uh, worshipping sampradayas in India, but all that is almost gone now. Nothing is, hardly anything is left. Though a little bit of sun worship, actually Surya, Argha and all that still goes on at an individual level. It is not very organized, neither is it the primary um, sort of upasana, form of upasana that is there at this moment. So it is, it can be a combination of multiple factors. One is that maybe the deity uh, uh, wills it to go backwards in terms of uh, uh, sort of the influence it spreads at the moment or at a particular moment in time. And also it could be additionally uh, certain events that have Caused. So there is also both this is happening anyway. So there is a set of events that is happening which destruction of the sun temples and all that and things like that. One that happened, the famous temples we had, uh, I think uh, in Pakistan there was a very famous sun temple which was destroyed in other places or Kashmir perhaps. Mm. This so, is in the medieval age? Yeah, Okay. Uh, by invaders. Okay. <coughs> so the question comes in that yes, some, uh, why did it not revive with that same vigor again after that okay because temples of shiva were also destroyed temples of other deities were destroyed but more or less shiva upasana continues right even if in spite of destruction continues so sometimes it's possible either the deity may withdraw or also there may be other factors like the karma of the people do not allow worship of this deity after a point for some period of time so there are multiple things that are possible okay um lots of tangential questions I, the only sun temple I've heard of now is the Konark sun temple. Yeah, so that's kind of in a dilapidated condition. Uh, yeah, so there was one in I think I think Pakistan or somewhere there is to be a very famous sun temple that was destroyed. Is there tantric practices with the sun? Uh, I don't know if there were any specific practices, but uh, worship of sun, uh, solar deity, uh, brings about certain things. For example, it brings a lot of fame. Um, and huh, the Sun Temple of Multan, exactly. So this was the... That's its state right now. Yeah. It barely even looks like a temple no, anymore. No, it's nothing. It's just broken structure. Just is, it, is it wrong for us to say that? No. I'm not being insulting towards... Whom? It it's, doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't ex it's been destroyed by the invaders. Long back. If you enjoyed this clip from The Ranveer Show, we've uploaded a ton of other clips related to a ton of other topics. So explore the channel because there's something for everyone.